Welcome, welcome, all of you. It's so nice to see all of you here. And will you bow your heads with me and let's welcome the Lord into our sanctuary. Precious Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are the God Almighty. You are the great and mighty Jehovah. We love you, Lord. We love you. We worship you. And may our praise music just be sweet, sweet sound to your ear. I just ask that you bless everyone that has attended. And all those who are not able to attend, just be with them. Be with our pastor. Be with our praise team. Just may these words fall upon the congregation, and may they enter into your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You are the Lord, the famous one, famous one, great. Your name in all the earth. The heavens declare your glorious, glorious, great is your name beyond the earth. 
in the room, let's spend it in a time of greeting to those around us. So if you could go ahead and find your seats. I'm gonna get a high five from Steve first. 
So it's announcement and greeting time. We just did the greeting. So what what better way to start the announcement time than with an announcement? Sally Copeland. I am not here to ask you for anything. I'm here to thank you. Um, it was a busy week getting ready for Wanda's memorial service yesterday, and it was lovely. And it was exactly what God intended. The family was very touched and enjoyed it and could sit back and just enjoy being with their family and friends, Wanda's friends. Thank you to every pan that baked a cake, that made a brownie, that made a cupcake. <laughs> Thank you to each one who decorated, who moved tables and chairs. That was not me. That's a big job. We need more people to do that, so keep that thought in mind for the future. And decorating, it was lovely, and cleanup just <laughs> in the snow. We needed to get out of here quickly. And many hands made light work, and we were able to accomplish that. And everyone got home safely, so I praised God. So I drove home praising God for every ounce of energy we needed and that everyone worked well together. And so thank each and every one of you. You know who you are. I'm not going to name names because I'll leave someone out. Thank you. And I might be in trouble. It's like, oh, hey, look, it's Rudy Monzo. Welcome back. <laughs> um, there are some announcements. Um, there's a Kentucky missions meeting today, right after service. Are we trying it in here or are we going to go over there? We're going to go over there because we know that's where you're going to be because of Donut Day. <laughs> and it's dessert day and please join us for the Kentucky meeting. And it's a great way for you to be, uh, even if you're not going, to be in prayer for those that are. So prayers are, are an amazing part of that. There is going to be food closet April 18th. Volunteers are always needed. Volunteers always show up, but you're welcome. If you're interested in what to bring or what you wanted to donate, um, they take food, but also there's a, a list of other things that may not come to your mind that's available for our food closet people. So know that that's coming. Uh, something very important as we're looking for not one person to lead up a ministry, but a couple of people that could do a teamwork kind of thing. It's always better to be part of a team for um, to co-lead children's teaching ministry. You can email Pastor Bob. It's in here. Take some time for prayer. And uh, co-lead, team lead is something that we're looking for. So one person isn't doing it um, all weeks of the year. So as we call ushers forward, we can... We can talk about uh, a special offering for this Kentucky Missions, something that's over and above uh, what you normally give. There is going to be a, a plate in the back, and whatever you put in that plate in the back on the credenza will be specifically for the, um, the Kentucky Missions. So we're going to pray for our offering now, and we will go ahead. Father God, we are at awe and in thanksgiving for what you supply. From We all woke up this morning to no snow today yet, to the, the graciousness of your son, the power of your word, and the, the, the presence of family at this service. Father, we're going to return to you um, dollars and cents. It's yours anyway. Uh, use it for your glory and your kingdom. We ask this. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Before me and Joanne share our morning song for offering, I'd like to just share um, from the Bible, 1 Chronicles 29, uh, verses 11 through 13. It says, Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are, you are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. Someone who knows 
what I'm up against. I know someone who's here in the midst of it, fighting for me in a battle I could never win. Might not be able to calm the storms. Might not be able to make my giants fall. Good thing I'm not alone. Cause there is a power that is greater. I'm not afraid of what's ahead. I'm standing in the confidence that even though I can't, my God can. Heal those who hurt, comfort, comfort every broken heart, restore the homes of families who've been torn apart, tell chains to break, and do what seems impossible, only He can. Might not be able to part the waters, might not be able might not be able to make my giants fall. Good thing I'm not alone. Cause there is a power that is greater. I'm not afraid of what's ahead. I'm standing in the confidence that even though I can't, my God can. Christ who gives me strength, I can do all things, all things, cause His Spirit lives in me. I can do all things, all things, through Christ who gives me strength, I can do all things, all things, cause His Spirit lives in me. I might not be able to part up the waters, might not be able to calm the storms, might not be able to make my giants fall. Good thing I'm not alone. Cause there is a power that is great. I'm not afraid of what's ahead. I'm standing in the confidence that even though I can't, my God can. Ooh, my God can. Morning. Let's continue in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings you bestow upon us. In this world of craziness, whether it's snow in Groveland in mid-April, or maybe peace talks in the Middle East, God, may we just remember that you are in control. You are the lamp at our feet, the one who guides us in the darkest valley. You are faithful to the end, and you are faithful to the end, and may we still always trust in your plan. And in Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, isn't it something to look out and just see the beautiful snow and everything? And even in April, because that means we get a hydrated, thirsty earth that the Lord quenches. And let us quench our thirst in the word of God. We'll be reading from Mark 1, 16 through 20. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Amen. Thank you, Dave. You've got an interesting love for that snow, doesn't he? You know the beautiful thing about California? 
Seriously, the, one, of the, one of the many beautiful things about California? Seriously, get, get this. The snow comes one day, and then before the sunset, it goes away. <laughs> it, just, it comes, and then you just go to bed, and it goes away. <laughs> uh, yeah, not like that in the Midwest. No, it just comes, it goes away. It's so cool. Anyway, but you know what? The word of the Lord, the word of the Lord, it stands forever. It will never perish and neither will the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's think about that as we pray today and, and think about what it means to be called as disciples fishing for Christ. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you for so much. Uh, we just lift up the act and the visibility of your sovereignty, Lord. One day we can see 75 degrees, and we look up into the mountains here, Lord, your playground, the place you created and we see the clouds, and we see the sunshine, and then we see the rain, and so we see the bounty of, Lord, what it means to have moisture. And it's just one visible way of saying God is present. We see the yellow flowers. We see the beauty that you bring to us, one more visible way that God is present. And then we see each other. And we see God's image created, not from human hand or, or human touch, but because of God, the Father, Jesus Christ, God's Son and the Holy Spirit. Lord, as we dive into Mark's gospel and we realize such an importance and urgency of the good news of the kingdom of God at hand, give us the confidence and the truth to be teachable disciples of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit. Help us hear you. Your Holy Spirit, you're here. The music has made that very aware. The scriptures and the prayer have made that very aware. Help us want to hear you, Jesus. May the words of my mouth not be mine, but with awe and expectation, and gratitude and humility, we just want to worship. The music has brought us in. The scripture has brought us in. We've been prayed up, Lord. Let us hear you in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. As we continue to, to look at Mark, <clears throat> we're going to look at the importance and the seriousness of being called as disciples. I got really good news for you. All of us our disciples. I, we, you can't say no. If you say no, let me help you out, okay? The seriousness of it. If you say no, and I know it happens at times, then you know who we're saying no to. We're not saying no to uh, the pastor because he wants some help with, you know, this project or that project. We're, we're not saying no to our parents because we want, they want help for, you know, for us to help them. We're saying no to God. And that's not to guilt us. It's not to say, oh, I better say yes. I just want us to think about who we're saying no to. I've been there. We've all been there. Well, well you really want me to help with the, with the children's ministry? Or you really want me to help teach that study? Or you really want me to go on that mission trip to Kentucky? No. Yes is better. I heard a yes. <laughs> There's a meeting after church. <laughs> but we say, no, that's too much work, Lord. And what if they disagree with me? What if they don't like me? What if I don't like them? <laughs> and all of a sudden, Mark comes out, and he, he gives us this quick synopsis. He gives us this quick Holy Spirit-written word of what it means to say yes. Remember, someone, and I, I've said this before, and I want to pound it in because we have to understand how important it is to us. Someone invited us to Christ or we wouldn't be here. And that's just factual, okay? That's factual. Somebody got us to come to Christ. And we can all raise our hand, and I think we should do this sometime more often. I really do. Testimony night. Raise our hand and say, this is my story. This is my story. This is my story. But it's hard work to go fishing for Christ. Fishing's not easy. And sometimes it's not fun. 
I had a person tell me a story one time. She said, I got to go fishing with my granddad. It was so exciting because all the other grandchildren got to go fishing. And I finally got old enough to go fishing with my granddad as she's telling a story. She said, I was about eight or nine years old. And, and Grandpa said at the beginning of the warmer season, it was around May or June, we're going to go fishing. She's like, yes, I get to go fishing. I'm thinking, you know what you're getting into. Anyway, <laughs> she got up at 5 o'clock in the morning with Grandpa. She got out in Grandpa's truck, and they, they went down to the, the reservoir, maybe Don Pedro, one of the reservoirs, and Grandpa got the boat out off the trailer, got it into the lake, and they got out on the lake. It's now about 6 o'clock a.m. The sun's coming up. It's great. She's all excited. And she said, Grandpa, help me put the worm on the hook. And we got all the stuff ready. We put it in the water, and we're all set to fish. And about 15 minutes, I look, and Grandpa's asleep in the back of the boat. <laughs> I said, what did I do? Why did I do this? And Grandma said to her, you know, maybe you should go fishing with somebody else, okay? Fishing is hard work, and it does take a lot of commitment, and it takes time. And you know what it really takes? Patience in relationships. And relationships are hard work, man. Once we start building relationships, we realize people are different. And we realize they're not like us in 100% of the way. And we realize this is going to take a lot of, of patience. And this is going to take a lot of work. But Jesus, that's the amazing thing about God's son. You want to talk about patience and love? You want to talk about agape love? Jesus just kept chasing and chasing and chasing you. And he never gave up. Even when I said, God, I don't care about you. He kept chasing you and I. He kept pursuing us. Look at verse 15. That's one that you might want to read in your quiet time this week. I really mean that. Obviously, uh, David did not read that. That was the verse before he read. He started in verse 16. But look at this. The time has come, Jesus said. Now John is in prison, and it's focused on Jesus. And Mark's gospel, still in chapter 1. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. You know what? That just didn't happen back then. It happens today. When's the last time we led somebody to Christ? And, and some of you, you get that joy in your heart. And there's like, it's here. The time has come. I get it. I'm glad you're with me. I'm glad you stuck with me. I'm glad you're here helping me get on my knees and say, I get it. I get it. I want to repent. I want the good news. I want Jesus as my Savior. I want the Holy Spirit. And the tears just start swelling up. Because you hit that moment where they get it. And they say, I'm ready. Whether it's your son or your daughter or, or one of your friends or one of your enemies, I'm, it's just they're there. Yeah, I've been there times. I've helped that happen. Uh, and sometimes I've put all the work in and somebody else has led them to Christ. But they say it's happened. And the joy just keeps raining and raining and raining over them. Man, I've seen some people since I've been here who, who start coming to church Praise God. And they're like, I like it here. This is the place to be because they got that. Somebody invited them. And they found that joy. And they found out what it means to be saved, to be a child of God, to understand the words, the God who stays. You know, this is great. We all can say, well, let's come up with some excuses. Well, pastor, you know, not a lot of people care about God. I got great news for you. Everybody cares about God. I may be like 0.99% off. Because I can count on less than one hand in all of my years of talking to people about Christ where they said, you know what, I don't want to talk to you about God. And I'm not making that up. Maybe three individuals. And I talk to a lot of people. Okay? <laughs> Sometimes including trees. Um, three individuals. I'm telling you, people are spiritually hungry. I challenge you to go find somebody that's not interested in saying, Hey, what do you, and, and, you know, go up to people, you know, you build a relationship first. But I'm telling you, people are interested in talking about God. You know what they're not interested in? And this hurts, this hurts to say. They're not interested in going to church. It's very true. I wish I could tell you otherwise. I have, not a lot, but I have a close circle of people who are like, 
I get it. You're about church. I understand that. You're a pastor. I don't want to go to church because I've been burned in church. And I'm tired of that. I've been hurt in church, hurt deeply. I grew up in the Bay Area, or I grew up here, or I grew up so in, in greater L.A., and it's, it hurt me. I get God. I love Jesus. And I get what Jesus is about. And I get what, what this Bible is about. But, Pastor, um, I'm not doing that again. I've been too rejected. And we got to keep fishing. And we got to remind ourselves what Groveland, or should I say Gateway Community Church, that's our new name because there's always some new faces for you. We're working towards that. But what that stands for, we want to be an outward-focused church. If we're an inward-focused church and we're just nothing but a country club for the saints, we're missing the boat. I'm saying, yeah, we're missing the boat. I want to go to the hospital. I want to go somewhere where I can be healed and forgiven and people can embrace me. We're not going to... We're not going to rewrite this scripture. It doesn't mean we're going to say, well, these morals all work in the Bible, only applies. No. That's not what the evangelical free church is about. We are about the scripture and what it means. But I'm telling you, we can still, we don't have to, we don't have to put all these um, abrasive moves on people when they come in to our community. And I... I love the people who say, what what about this part of my life? What about that part? You know what? We'll start working on that. Right now, let's just worry about forgiveness. Let's just start with God's love and forgiveness. And let's start working on getting our lives worked out. I've been trying to work my life out for 59 years. Okay? And God's still forgiving me. We don't want to be an inward-focused church. We don't want to be one of those places where, Pastor, I've been to that church, and it's not good. Are we perfect? No. But I'm telling you, the first thing we need to understand about what verse 15 really stands for is outward-focused church. That's why we do what we do on this Thursday and Friday. That's why we do this children's ministry, because we know that we want to establish a foundation of God's word, God's love, this youth ministry we have here. And what Tom does and all the helpers, I see some of you, you're helping each Wednesday or on Sunday mornings or Tuesday at 4-H or Thursday or, or the Pinecone Singers and all of this. And I probably missed that in their Bible studies. We do this because we want to be outwardly focused. We want to be a place where we say, hey, you go over to that place, they'll help you. Doesn't mean we can do everything. We're not going to do everything. But we definitely want to know that the time has come and the kingdom of God has come near. And we want to be about repenting and believing in the good news. Yeah, that's a lot of words right there in one verse. And we can help flush that out and what that means as time goes on and discipleship goes on. So let's take a deeper look at that. Jesus calls these, these fishermen now, I got to admit, um, I have interviewed for different positions and I've interviewed people for positions. And I got to tell you, these fishermen wouldn't be my first high on the list for somebody in sales. I'm serious. They, 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 they don't work with people. You know what they do for a living? They get in a boat, they go out on a lake called Galilee, and they get alone so they can fish. Not exactly a sales position. Okay? The skills aren't really ranking up there saying, okay. But God sees so much more in us. The sovereignty of God is so much greater than I am. At times I'm like, oh, I got it all figured out, Lord. Then I tell God, you know how I got it all figured out. And then I tell God what God's going to do. You ever done that? Yeah, that's a mess. (laughs) I've been there. That's a real mess. And God says, why didn't you just listen to me to begin with? God looks at these disciples through Jesus Christ, God's son. You know why? Because they trusted him. Do we trust Jesus? Yeah. 
Don't say yes real quick because that's going to be a whole lot of yes. All right? Do we trust Jesus? Do we trust? Well, well, Lord, I trust you. I trust you, Jesus, but don't put me with that person. Why? Because I'm going to end up tearing that person apart. Okay? You know how I feel. I trust you, Lord, but, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know how I feel about that. I'm not going to Kentucky, Lord. No way, not with that group. Okay. <laughs> I mean, these are things that the disciples had that some of us sometimes, including myself, we need to work on. They left their nets. They left their comfort zone. They left what they felt God was putting them in because it was nice and easy. And their lives got undone. They went all the way to Jerusalem with them and watched him die, and they said, I didn't sign up for this, but they trusted him. Man, that's, that's tough stuff. Trusting God when, when, when our lives are sitting there going, yeah, but I'm caught up in this, Lord, and I, I know you love me, and I got caught into this web, and I need to trust you. And you can fill that web in. And then there's one more thing. They were teachable. If we're going to trust God, we're going to allow ourselves to be taught by God. Well, you want me to love someone that's really difficult to love? Yes. I can almost hear God saying to us and to me, to you and I, but you're difficult to love sometimes. Yeah. And I'd say, oh, you're absolutely right, Lord. Are we interested in fishing at the level where we want to trust our Savior with the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can be taught by God to go places we don't want to go? Now, that doesn't mean that if, if you um, don't like cooking, you know, that's okay. Then don't sign up for ministry that involves, I get that, it involves cooking. God's not going to put us somewhere where we absolutely don't want to be. I, I, I know that. I just live with that. But it does mean that God's going to push and say, you need to try this. You need to help in this area. Okay. You need to help in this area. You need to go to this place in the community. What about the school? You know, at school at Tanaya and Tioga, but especially at Tanaya, they have a time where you go and you read. Some of you do it. You read to the kids and you work with them for math. Do you know what a ministry that is? You know, that's a ministry. Those kids are getting help. And they're seeing someone that has a glow that's teachable and trustable. You're going fishing, okay? All of this. I, 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 on Wednesday nights, I get to the gathering, and I sometimes hear uh, our youth ministry outside and, and, and all the joy and the laughter and the screaming, and the screaming's a good thing, and all of that that goes on. And I'm like, they're fishing out there. There's a whole pond, and they're fishing out there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So are we, are we ready to say to Jesus, I'm ready to be teachable. I'm ready to trust. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, and he saw Simon, which is Peter, his brother Andrew, casting a net into the lake, they were fishermen. And what did Jesus say eventually? Hey, you follow me. I'll teach you how to fish for people. How interested are we in doing that? This is Mark's gospel. It moves right from the birth of Christ, right from the announcement to the fact that now I'm calling you. Peter, <laughs> he was caught up in forgiveness. How was he teachable? The first thing he realized is he was forgiven. You can read it on your own time, but in Luke chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, I'm just going to pull one verse out of there, and I'm going to talk to you about it. But, I mean, it, it's a more expansive way of, of, of Peter being called by Christ. What happened here, and, and Mark's very, very quick to the point, okay? Um, what happened here is, is Peter and, and his, his friends, are, they're, the companions, they're all out there fishing on the Sea of Galilee, and they come in. They've had a long night. And this happens. I don't fish, but I've heard this a lot. They didn't catch anything. And that can happen. And their livelihood depends on it. I think of farmers sometimes when they bring the crop in in October and it's like, this is not good. 
okay? It's almost as if we got to, I'm glad I got insurance. It was one of those nights where Peter's like, I'm glad I got insurance. And he's tired. And he feel like, what a wasted energy. And this rabbi, I know it's the son of God, but they see him as a rabbi. They don't see him as the son of God yet. This takes time. Fishing takes time. Fishing takes relationships. And this rabbi comes up by the name of Jesus of Nazareth, and, and, and he looks at Peter and says, hey, can I use your boat as, as a pulpit? Because there's a lot of people here, and I need to get a little higher up. And of course, out of respect, Peter's going to say, absolutely. I'm tired. I've had a long night, but you're a rabbi. Absolutely. And so Jesus gets up, and he starts speaking, and Peter's in drawn in, and, and he's amazed, and he's like, this is not a rabbi. This is not a rabbi. And something's starting to build. And Jesus looks at Peter and says, you, you've been fishing? Yeah. This is all in Luke um, chapter uh, 5, verses 1 through 11. And Peter says, yeah, we didn't catch anything. Why don't you go out just one more time, cast your nets, and see what happens. It's all in there. And Peter just looks at him. You can almost read between the lines. Peter looks at him like, you've got to be kidding me. You can almost hear Peter say, look, you're a good teacher. I have listened to you, but you are not a fisherman. I have spent the whole night out there wasting my time, and you, a rabbi, want me to go out there and you expect me to catch fish. In the heat of the day, when they aren't fishing, what do you know about fishing? Have you ever said that to God? What do you know about my life? What, what do you know what I'm going through? Are you even here? Peter goes out. You know the story? The disciples, they, they catch so much fish that they can't even get it in the boat. The nets are going to break. And Peter just looks at a moment of confession. In Luke chapter 5, verse 8, Peter just looks at not the rabbi. There's no rabbi here. He looks at the Son of God. And Simon Peter saw this. Does it say rabbi? No, it says he fell at Jesus' knees. And does it say rabbi? No, he said, go away from me, Lord, with a capital L. Don't you love the word of God? This is like moments of aha. It doesn't say rabbi. It doesn't say good teacher. It doesn't say a man who died that just performed miracles. A good teacher. It says, Lord, I am a sinful man. Gosh, I remember when I just finally said it. You remember when you said it. If you're here today, Lord, oh, I'm a sinful woman. I am a sinful man, and I'm grateful for your love. I need you. I need you to breathe. And Jesus says, Peter, you, you, you just trust me, and I'll teach you how to fish for people. Don't worry about all the details. Just be teachable and trust me. Come follow me in verse 17 in Mark, back in Mark chapter 1. Now we're back in Mark chapter 1. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. This is not easy stuff. This is not the 1995 thing we get on the, on the cable channel with five easy payments of 1995 or 59. This is the real deal. This is a lifelong process. And all of a sudden, we find ourselves with a challenge today, don't we? Do I want to be a follower? Do I want to fish? Well, what happens when they don't bite? Well, you fish some more. Well, what happens when they just walk away? You keep fishing. Don't pound them and call them at 2 in the morning and say, did you know Jesus loves you? <laughs> don't, don't, don't do that, okay? <laughs> Trust me, they'll hang the phone up. <laughs> I haven't really done that, okay? <laughs> Maybe to a friend. Anyway. <laughs> but the, the, someone invited you and I. Someone went fishing for us. Someone said, I want to talk to you about Jesus, and I need time to really talk to you about it. Someone said, we're at a point in the relationship where it's time to start talking about it. Well, what about the church? Well... <laughs> You know, the church is not perfect. I got great news for you. 
The church is a hospital for the sinners, not a museum for the saints. And we just have to remember that because I need to come to this hospital. I come in here sometimes and just pray because I need this hospital. We all, the world needs this hospital. It's like a lighthouse shining in the darkness. I don't know the name of the uh, camp counselor that brought me to a point where at 17, I, 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 got, I said, Lord, I need you, and it was real. I just, rain came down on me that wouldn't stop. I don't know where he is today, but I know he went fishing for me. I know others in my life, and you know them too. Come on. You know how many times people in your life just kept praying for you and kept pestering you in a positive, loving way. It's, I want to keep after you, and took you out for lunch and said, come with me. I want you to go on this with me. I want you to do this with me. All of those names come together because those individuals knew that Christ was counting on them. While he was on the cross, we were on his mind. And Christ is calling not just Peter and Andrew and all the others. He's calling us, and today the good news is at hand, and it's ready to be presented, and we can be a place in the news to present. Not social media, not whatever the politics are coming about, but the news is from us. Yeah, and it's real news. It has withstood the test of time. It's not changing. It's fishing for people. It wants to give us eternal life. It wants us to be a part of the Holy Spirit. It wants us to say, Lord, God, I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's what, yeah, that's, that's, that's what Christ is counting on. I mean, are we, are we interested in the seriousness of what Peter was called to? what all of the disciples were called to by name. Can't you just see Jesus coming up to us while we're at work um, in, in whatever that is or volunteering in the community or at the school or at the clinic or wherever and just say, now, there's a good woman of God. There's a good man of God. Christ is counting on you. He puts his hands on our shoulders and he reminds us of our children. And he reminds us of our friends. He reminds us of where we play, where we work, where we worship. And he just says, Christ is counting on you. It's really very simple today, but it's a very profound message. I just, I want to go backwards because um, that slide is, is so important. The time, verse 15, just, just let that sink in. Let the words come alive. The time has come, Jesus says. This Bible doesn't die. The book of Revelation, in the end, Christ wins. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. I remember when, um, when I first came to Christ, and I think you're, you, you can all resonate with this, okay? Okay. Some of you are new in Christ. Praise God, I want you here. You know why? Because when you're new in Christ, you've got energy. You're like alive. You're like, I want to pray. I want to I wanna help people. And then, you know, we get a little weathered, and we're like, oh, we got to do it this way. We got to do it that way. And, yeah, you know, we start getting this whole thing involved in us, and we start thinking, well, I can wait this week. I can wait that week. But the newness of Christ is amazing in people. I can remember when I was just brand new, and you, you all can... Raise your hands. Yeah, I remember that, man. I remember when I had that energy and I just wanted to grab my friend and say, you got to come with me. That's what I want. That's what I resonate to and just want that energy. Christ is counting on us. Mark is very clear and very to the point. He doesn't get into the details. Luke and Matthew kind of go in a little deeper. What does Mark say? You can almost hear him with the Holy Spirit talking to him. And, oh, yeah, I want you to make sure you get this in the gospel. At once they left their nets and they followed him. I'm going to ask Steve to come up and give us a little bit of music. And, and I just want us to think about who, who's, at, who's talking to us? Who are we talking to? Who's in conversation with us? Is, is it a, a, one of our, our, our sons or daughters? 
Is it a friend in the neighborhood? Is it somebody that just keeps asking and I, oh man, I got to, there's the opportunity. Is someone where we work? And what are we going to do? How far are we going to go with that? We're not going to fall asleep in the boat. <laughs> How far are we going to go with that? Let's just spend some time in prayer. Gracious Lord, we get it. We, we understand that you're counting on us. We get it. We're the message of God. We're the hands and the feet of salvation. We're the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord. And we're about the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sins, the gift of eternal life, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, the driving, driving force of the Holy Spirit, the excitement of salvation in a world that is starving for truth. We looked at how much time, Lord, including myself, we, we spend on social media and what we're looking for. We're looking for truth. We're just, we're just wanting the truth of God. Help us talk to people. Help us invite people. Help us be fishers of people, Lord. Peter was not a salesman. He wanted to get out on the lake and, and be alone. So was Andrew. So were the other two, the sons of Zebedee, Lord. They wanted to be on the lake and be alone. And yet they became the founding fathers of the Christian church. Your church. Your salvation. Because they wanted to be taught by you. They trusted you. Come on, Lord. Holy Spirit, I know you're talking to us. <laughs> Don't let us overwhelm people. Relationships are the first key. And let us just acknowledge that we're not perfect. This church is not perfect. Your community is not perfect perfect, but we are saved by the grace of God. We are a hospital for sinners, Lord, and I'm grateful for that. We just lift that up today, and Lord, if, if we don't know you today, if we're like, I'm ready, I, I'm ready, I've had enough people fish for me, I want to come to Christ, just help us where we are, Lord, right in our pew, right in that little holy pew, that holy altar, help us say, Lord, forgive me. I want you as my Savior. I want to acknowledge you as the Son of the living God. I want you to be my salvation. Please forgive me. Get, come into my life. Make a home, Lord. Make a home. And help me know that eternity is mine because of you. Help me believe, Lord, that you died for me and you rose again and you gave me the gift of the Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Help us be inviting, outward focused. We just lift this up, Holy Spirit. And we thank you. As we get ready to sing the closing song, Lord, the kingdom of God awaits. Worship is over, but the kingdom is waiting for us. And we say amen. Amen, Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. All right. Let's stand and join together. Um, I got great news for you. Before, after the closing song, there's donuts. Yeah. <laughs> and there's also a lot of pastry in there because I tasted it yesterday. It's really good. So let's enjoy together. No longer slaves. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. You unravel me. With the melody, you surround me with the song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am. Child. 
child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. The love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer saved to fear. I am a child of God. now for the closing challenge, gracious Lord, Christ is counting on us. So Holy Spirit, help us fish. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.